then i will uh, go ahead with the grout harvesting techniques um, after the ramakant's uh, basics uh, concepts about arthroscopic acl reconstruction so here i'm going to uh, show two uh, hamstring and ptb grafts so when you do a hamstring graft harvest which is very com uh, commonly used for arthroscopic acl reconstruction you can do on two ways we can do an outside in or inside out technique I uh, started using inside technique for last almost 15 years. So I going to demonstrate here uh, inside out uh, graft harvesting technique for the uh, hamstring. So usually you start the oblique incision to avoid the or minimize the nerve injury. That is the tibial tuberosity, at least or one and a half centimeter uh, medial and distal to the tibial tuberosity where incision starts and ends over there. You can make two to three centimeter incision or if you are in a starting stage, you can even make a four in, uh, centimeter. That is the Pessan's area. I just going to incise the Pessan's area along the tibial tibia, almost on the uh, shin of the tibia. You can see that is a Pessan's area can be easily elevated. Just making with the tensile knife. What you are seeing underneath is the glistening structure is the superficial medial collateral ligament. You can see that that is the superficial MCL. And this is the pes ansaria. So the pes ansaria has got sartorius starting with the proximally, then chrysalis, then semitendinosis. So that is the pes ansaria. Once you hold the pes ansaria, then you can able to see here what you are seeing is the semiti. What you are seeing here is the chrysalis. So chrysalis is in the proximal, semiti in the distal. So chrysalis goes upwards and semiti goes more downwards in the posterior. That means more posteriorly. So that is how you differentiate your chrysalis. And semiti. So once you identified both gracelys and uh, semiti, uh, sometimes quadrupled semiti is more than sufficient. If it is not sufficient, if you don't have enough thickness of around 8 mm, you can take both the grafts. Here I'm taking the semiti first. You use the right angle to go around it. You incise it, I mean, sorry, uh, pull it up. Then you can use the 11 size uh, knife to take the distal uh, attachment of your semiti from the Pissan area and it comes to almost up to the uh, bone level. So you have uh, enough length of uh, semiti when you take through this technique. Once you take it out, then you uh, you can take out the vinculi. There are two, three vinculi underneath that semiti. Sometimes when you pull it up itself, that one or two vinculi can get cut. Otherwise, you can use the scissor facing downwards, release the vinculi, uh, all the attachments, then you free your semiti. So it is very easy. The only problem is when you are, if you don't release the enough win, uh, uh, wind collide, then the possibility that it can get cut over there. So once you see this kind of around eight to 10 centimeters, then most probably you are safe. But you have to spend some time to release the wind collide when you take the semiti graph. But Gracely doesn't have the much attachment, Gracely's, but semiti has got at least three wind collide, so that has to be released with the, uh, you are uh, scissors very carefully. Then you make uh, loop stitches over the semiti. Then use your closed stripper or a open stripper. Then you can go to, uh, uh, around the uh, semiti, go deep. You can go with by slow pushing, and it will just cut off the muscles and comes off. So that is your semiti. Once you took off the semiti, if the as I said, you can many people use five strands or six strands because we want at least eight mm or nine mm graft in most of the situations. Sometimes you may not get that enough length and thickness from semiti alone, then you take the gracelys. So this is the gracelys proximal to the semiti. Usually I take semiti, measure it, then if it is not enough, then I take the gracelys. So it is the same way, it is, comes very easily than semiti. So take the stitches, it doesn't have much wind fly. So I just release along the scissor. So make sure that whenever you use the scissor, you are facing away from the grab, whether uh, using the proximally or distal to the tendon, make sure that your, your uh, sharp end of the scissor is facing away from the grab. Then the same way you take the grace lease by after making the some loop stitches, then you can take the uh, closed or a open stripper and the same way you are going to take the uh, grace lease grabs. So you should not hesitate to, to take two grafts because many times nowadays we use five or six strands to get that eight to nine size of the graft. That is the grace list. The other techniques which you can use, uh, I mean, once I think this is important that to know the five, how to make the five strands graft 
uh, when you harvest the uh, semi hamstring uh, hamstring. So this is the semi You take out all the muscles with the scale or uh, uh, scissors or whatever instruments you can is possible. You can use it. Then you can see that after taking this is the semi You make it triple, and this is the gracefully along with that. This is going to be the five strands. This is three, and you are going to fold it with these two strands. So here semi alone is there. So you triple it. Then the doubled uh, semi T, hold it with your um, not a sharp instruments. So then you talk, uh, start stitching this uh, doubled. Uh, this is the uh, semi T. There is one more strand is lying down here. So take multiple stitches over that. Then you loop it, whatever the stitch you made it here. Then you turn around that loop that looped it. Then put the gray stitch along with that and stitch on either side. Once you make the stitches on either side, then you are going to have the three strand uh, 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 semi T and grace list on either side. Then you can use your graft. So this is the grace list on the other end, stitches to the other end of the looped graft. So once you have done that uh, stitching on the either side, then you can use your loop of the adjustable or your fixed loop to the graft, then you make the markings. I think this the next talk is going to be about the uh, all the markings. So I'm not going to go on on that. If you want to do only semi tea harvest, sometimes the posterior incision also is will be very helpful. This is a very easy technique where you flex the knee to, you don't need to put a prone position. You can make a 90, 90 degrees and uh, make a small two centimeter incision. You can palpate the semi tea very easily is palpable. Then use your finger to separate the, all the fatty tissues around the semi tea. Then once you had the semi tea, you then you loop around with some uh, infantile tube catheters. Then you release the all other uh, soft tissues around the semi tea over there. Once you have done that clearance, then you use a open stripper and detach from the proximally first. Then you come to the distal side. So once you've done that, you take the open stripper. Then you go around the semi tea, pass on posteriorly and proximally up to the proximal thigh. So that gives that detaches your proximal semi T from the muscle. Once you have done that uh, proximal release, then you take the board for the preparation of your semi T. You can keep board underneath your semi T, then you can remove all the muscles around muscles from the uh, semi T. Once you've done that, uh, all the clearance of your uh, soft tissues around the graft, then you use your closed or open strip, uh, then detach from your distal attachment. So you can see that this is the leg, this is the thigh portion. Then you take out from the uh, distal portion of your closed or open strips. So that is the distal attachment, which are going to strip it off. So this is how you can take the semi T alone through this mini incision. The last harvest, which I'm going to demonstrate is the petlar tendon bone harvest. I think this is the one which you should know because this is the, it could be a salvage option or in a revision situations, we do a, we do require a petlar tendon bone graft harvest. You draw a diagram first, then you can see the, uh, Either side of the petala tendon, you mark it. This is the tubal tuberosity, that is the petala. You make a curved medial incision around one centimeter below the petala level. Because the skin is very elastic, you can move upward and downwards very easily around two centimeters. So you don't make a big incision from here to here. You require only a four centimeter incision uh, for a petala tendon harvest. Then incise the petala tendon fascia, then expose the petala tendon both proximally and distally. Once you have done that, then you retract on either side with your, you require at least four retractors 
on either side of the patellar tendon so make marking of your edges of both the medial and lateral border of the patellar tendon you can see that you had exposed the entire patellar tendon then you mark on both the medial side this is the lateral end and the medial end and i'm going to take the central 10 mm of patellar tendon grafts which i'm going to mark it with my scale then i use a 10 size knife to make that vertical cut of that one centimeter center one central one third patellar tendon on the either side once you have done that incision then i retract the remaining patellar tendon on either side with my both retractors on the medial and other both other retractors from the lateral side then you take down the, the lower retractor so much down so you can see the skin is moved around two to two and a half centimeters you don't need to make an extra incision then you incise distally around two and a half to three centimeter and make a cut then you require a saw this is very important step you should not use uh, osteotome alone because you can fracture the graft so you need a t-shaped saw or this kind of uh, uh, multiple direction where you can move around that you require this kind of small saws which for the patellar tendon is very important you angle it around 45 degrees on both medial and the lateral side of your incision in the tibial bone you can see that I'm angling it slightly uh, uh, towards the, on either side, that is around 45 degrees to 60 degrees. Once you made it both medial and lateral cutter, then I make the distal cutter, distal cut. So that is my distal cut for your tibial side patellar tendon graft. Then you use the osteotome, around the 10 mm osteotome, which is a curved one, slowly tap it on both the medial side and the lateral side. You can take uh, even slightly the tongue shaped bone proximal to the patellar tendon, I mean the, the bone level. So that can give an extra length of the graft for you. Once you tapping around on the either side, then you make the distal tapping. Then easily you can lever out the, the patellar graft very easily without breaking that. So this is very important that you use very slowly so that you don't break the graft for patellar tendon bone graft. Once you are done and elevated the petlar tendon graft, then detach the remaining soft tissues under the petlar tendon. With the help of the scissor, we can see that that is a table sided graft, release entirely. So this is done in around 90 degrees of flexion. The whole tibial side graft removal was taken in the 1990 like this. Then you hold it with your uh, cloth then i do the extension for your petlar side harvest so this is a tibial side harvest is over then we keep it around 10 to 20 degrees of flexion we extend it so that the skin can be pulled very easily upwards you can see that how it is moving around it is around two to three centimeter you can move the skin upwards so that you don't make an extra incision which is not required then you release that sheath over the patella bone. You require 1.5 to 2 centimeters on the patella side because uh, usually I do the uh, patella graft which goes on the femoral side. So you require 1.5 to 2 centimeters. You don't need to do like a tibial side. Tibial side you take around 3 centimeters. And, and here I take around 1.5 to 2 centimeter. So remaining tendon was uh, incised. Then you make that one and a half centimeter incision through your knife to on the patella. So ask your assistant to support underneath the knee around 20 degrees of flexion that, that will support that uh, uh, knee. And you are holding it in the left hand or pulling the graft so that will stabilize the patella. Otherwise, the patella will move here and there. So it is very important to stabilize the patella by pulling it and keeping it by yourself especially when you make in the uh, use when you are using the saw in one hand so with the help of the flexion 20 to 30 degrees of flexion you can see that i'm just flexing some more so that my saw doesn't uh, uh, goes easily again you do the same cut around 45 degrees cut goes around 9 to 10 mm down so because you require a graft of 9 to 10 mm of graft all around so you do it on both the medial side and the lateral side as which we have done for the tibial graft, tibial side. 
Once you are done, then the both the medial and lateral side, again, I make that uh, proximal cut with the same, it's angling upwards. Ask the assistant to flatten your, uh, flatten the retractor so that doesn't hit your saw. So you can, then you make the distal cut around 45 degrees. So the only, the, uh, you have to be very careful, the petala, you should not go too deep because you know that there is a reported reports of petal fractures when you have PTP craft harvest. That is because of the too much uh, excision of the, uh, or too much depth if you go inside, the possibility it can rupture. Once you do the, all the three decided cuts, then I go again underneath that uh, petal uh, graft, which I had incised already. I remove all the soft tissues. Then again, I use the another cut in the petala so that when you, you should not hammer the petala like the tibial side because the possibility of fracture is very high. So I make all sided cuts on the both medial, lateral, distal and also the underneath. You keep it around 9 mm. Use the distal cut so that you don't fracture with the osteotome. So the osteotome is only to deliver and the final finishing of your detachment of your petala tendon graft from the parent petala. Then I use the small curved osteotome. You can see that just I deliver it. So this is a PTP graft harvest. Then you nibble it. You make the size of 9 to 10 mm. Then you make a drill around both proximally, I mean, and distally with at least two holes, keep, keeping the distance of around at least 5 to 10 mm so that you make fiber wire or you can use even SS wire for your graft passage. So that is the petal tendon. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.